of nine videotapes provides an opportunity to share in a unique experience where Stafford Beer introduces an audience to the world of managerial cybernetics. The event took place over five days in July 1994 at the Falkendale Hotel near Lampeter in Mid Wales. It was organised by the Liverpool Business School at John Moores University, where Stafford is Honorary Professor in Organisational Transformation and a Senior Fellow. The aim was to provide a video learning resource by recording discussions between Stafford and an audience that had little or no previous knowledge of the subject. Over the course of the event, Stafford explains the development of the subject from the initial scientific discovery of cybernetics. Through his own development of managerial cybernetics, he introduces the tools and models that he has created to offer an alternative approach to conventional management practice. The resulting material embraces the key principles and models that have previously been introduced in his 13 books and referred to in many of his published papers. This is the first learning resource where all these have been brought together in one integrated way. Managerial cybernetics continues to be the only available scientific and coherent account of effective managerial practice. Stafford provides numerous anecdotes, applications and insights from the perspective of practitioner, manager and scientist. Session begins with a discussion of how the teams are modelling their System 1 and organisational recursions. Significant time is used to review this stage of modelling, reflecting the importance of defining System 1s as, as they deliver the total system purpose. However, Systems 1 alone would not be sufficient to account for the total system viability. The remaining types of subsystems, systems 2, 3, 4 and 5, are now added to the basic model and related to common management activities such as audits, resource allocation, scheduling, strategy and corporate planning. Each subsystem is also illustrated in the context being analysed by the study teams. Stafford shows how templates of various parts of the viable system model can be used to cut down on viability modelling time. The focus of this session is the group of subsystems comprising 1, 2, 3 and 3 star, which deals with the inside and now, and which is comparable to the human autonomic nervous system. Discussion of its properties leads to the principle that management should intervene only enough to maintain the coherence of the whole. Oh, um, let's start. Um, I left you with, with that part of the diagram and you were supposed to be trying to find out what the systems one were of your group and I wondered if you'd like to begin by a quick rundown on that. Uh, nominate a group, somebody. Well, the um, Welsh Parliament one. Right. We've got slight problems with it. Mm. <laughs> a lot of problems. Um, mm. Because we are talking about Parliament, not government. So you know, civil servants and all that is... Out. Is, 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 um, mm. And um, we 
thought that many constituencies might be Mm. Aren't you going to have any ministers? Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, yes, that's a different thing altogether, yes. What I usually do, and I've bought, I've actually gone to the lengths of bringing a paper called um, Disseminated Regulation in Real Time, <laughs> or How to Run a Country. <laughs> and I've brought that for you, which I will give you at the end of the day, because it's got the whole model in it. But what I usually do, and I've done a lot of this, you see, is I take the ministries, because forget the civil service, the ministries themselves are a legislative affairs. The minister has to get stuff through into, uh, into law, doesn't he? So, so I start with that, and then the, uh, the regions of the country, usually, in the environment. Now, you could do that by constituencies, but you'll be accused of gerrymandering. <laughs> there are various ways to do it. What I want you to get the feel of at the moment is quite simply that each of those things is supposed to be a viable system in its own right. What I mean, I can see different um, systems working quite like administrative systems. Hmm. But then, what I couldn't relate to was, was that. I mean, where? I mean, would then the a minister mm. be one of the one of the square boxes? Yes. And then the, the, round, the middle bit is is the process the that he's process he's got under his control, or hopes he has, <laughs> which probably includes the civil service. You see, but it. It's going to include, in the long run, the the programmes that this guy is trying to deliver. Yes, but if we're just if we're just looking at the parliament mm -hmm. rather than government, right? Then I mean, the the, the process is, is, the, is the process of getting the laws. <laughs> if if that's where you're sticking, yes. You know, all times with this stuff, you have to keep the levels of recursion very clearly in mind. Yeah. See, the Parliament is going to be embedded in a whole system of government, isn't it? Yeah, got you. Well, that's coming along. Let's not spend too long on this. I just want you to feel that you're making some progress. And, and when you've got the whole model, then you will say, Ah, I see it all now. <laughs> and if not, I shall have gone. <laughs> What's another group? Retail. Group. Retail. I had an excellent mm -hmm. example this morning in the paper, which gave us a chance to really study the system well. And that was, uh, was it W... W... Um, Low Sensitive Centre. Low. 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 It's the same thing on Tesco, going to mind to take over and more of us. Right. So this is... We, we were having a problem with which level of recursion we were going to work at, didn't we? Yeah. Because does retail include... Do we have to include all the manufacturing process as well? Because it's still all related. Or do we just do it at like well, one company level? Or mm. We had a problem as well how much we're going to entail at first, didn't we? Yeah. So this helped us this morning because we were able to put this one situation. Mm -hmm. into mm. one it, was talk, it was talking about the board of uh, WM Lewis. Yes. Low. 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 Mm. Low, uh, recommending mm -hmm. that this takeover should take place. Mm. And so we're really looking at the board. Right. Which um, could easily be a higher level within a, a, a system yeah. of the UN Lewis, but then we were thinking that, no, it's a, it's a system one within um, commerce, if you like. It's a system yes, one. well, it's, it's levels of recursion again, yeah. you see. Yeah. And that, Yes, well, I'm not surprised. I mean, these ideas are pretty complicated, you see. This is why I'd like you to, to try it out. Now, when you say retailing, see, retailing can be like Sainsbury's, an end in itself, or it can be part of a manufacturing company with a retail arm. So that's the next level of recursion up. Sainsbury's hasn't got a next level of recursion up, except for the industry of which it's part. And then you get... Sainsbury's and I've run out of names. <laughs> Tesco, etc. Yes. Good. So, so much for that. That's starting. Next one. Two really nice articles. One on Gillian Shepherd, take over from Patton. That was nice um, because she addressed the uh, 
the most non-militant union, and, and, and it was all full of increasing variety. Very good example of that. So the, the system ones in that we decided were the um, that union assembly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also the, uh, the 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 systems of secondary, primary, tertiary. That's quite nice. And the, and then the government oh, wasn't it the government body. Oh yes, and the fact that she was being advised by someone mm. who had um you know, well, I think you may find yeah. out that some of the things you've mentioned belong elsewhere in the system yeah. because, um, for instance, an advisory body is certainly not what the system's there to do. Right. You know? yeah. And that's your criteria. Yeah. And always, please, when you do think you're focusing on the level of recursion you want to study, always look at the one lower down and the one higher up. Then you get the sense of being censored. <laughs> that's very valuable. Yeah. The other one was about um, success of boys against girls. Girls seem to be achieving better exam results, so they've decided to remove boys from from the system and educate them in, in isolation. Ooh, yeah. Well, one school. Love that going to do it again, isn't it? One no. <laughs> this was in Shenfield. There's um, all that co-ed is having single sex classes. Yeah. And they're, they're teaching these schools, whereas there was also in the same high school a good example of another school which has said, yes, boys don't perform because their language is, is poorer than the girls, they don't talk as much, their attitude is different, etc., etc. And they pinpointed these things and actually worked on them and said, well, instead of having hands up, let's have the answer. We'll always have them working in pairs, so they, they in, in, increase their language. And, and this is actually in a positive knock-on effect with, with standards. It takes sounds like it to me. <laughs> I thought we seem to be going backwards, don't we? Incredible. Well, the, the simplest way to look at the education thing in the practical sense as distinct from government is um, it's obviously what you've, what you've included in that is to take primary, tertiary, uh, primary, secondary, tertiary further and so on as branches of education, all of which are systems one. And then within that, you get to a particular school, for instance, and you're, you're several layers down now, and now you've got forms, classes, whatever you're going to call them. Um, and it makes a very neat model, this, uh, this education one. We have another one. Separated into systems, whether to do it by kind of like five stations sort of first, but that's not really. By what, Claire? Five stations, but that's not really what I mean. No. Sort of doing by region, which is alright for like the ones that stay in that region, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work for the ones that go through like a few regions, or by the path of one train. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're talking about the whole of the transport, so the first breakdown surely is going to be railroad, now yeah. telepathy. <laughs> okay, well, you're getting the hang of this. Now, we better get on with this wretched model. Now, as you see, system one is what, what you're in business for, whatever you're doing here. So that's why I spent so long on it. It, it is crucial and the rest falls into place around it, as I say. Well, now, um, if it's so important, next question is, why isn't that it? Why do you have to do anything else? <laughs> yeah, I'll try and, and demonstrate to you what's going to go wrong straight away. We have given powers to each of these strips, the horizontal axis. Uh, we have used the argument that unless the management is allowed to use its skills to the full, it's going to have a hell of a job getting its variety across its own neck of the woods. And we've said that um, that people should have autonomy. And I hope you realize from this argument that autonomy is 
a relative thing and not an absolute thing, and that's why it's so damn difficult to handle in practice. It's a bit like the business of the viable system. We said that viable systems exist independently, and then we found out that, of course, it, we don't actually mean totally independently. And in this same way, we don't actually mean total freedom. Because what's going to happen is this, that this fellow and this woman, these two management, management units, pursuing their own goals, which they're told to do and entitled to do, are going to clash, aren't they? Now, uh, let me give you, I, I want to make it as graphic as possible. Let, let's, I've mentioned steel several times because it's strongly connected. Iron, steel, rolling, you know, you go straight down from a chunk of ore to a, a piece of watch spring. Now, supposing you're in the middle, your management in the middle of this, and you would then say, because you're trying to optimize your performance, you say to the previous department, I want 10 tons an hour, always, all the time, because that's going to keep me nicely moving. See? The, the guy that you're addressing has just sent you a, a bit of electronic mail saying you, you're going to get the whole blessed lot on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> Naturally, he can't afford to make it in 10 tons an hour for you. He's got other people to, to look after. So, clash. And then the people that you are serving on this uh, downward path, you say to them, we are going to send you your stuff, and they are coming back to you saying, oh no, thanks very much, we need it on these days. So the potential for the clash is gigantic especially in the strongly connected case. So, what are you going to do? You can't come down that red line and tell everybody what to do. That is absolutely destructive to everything we've been trying to understand. And that is the reason, you see, for system two. Have I got another colour here? No, I think I'll, I'll stick to black here. Yeah. System two, which I depict like this, All these are one. System two exists precisely to control oscillatory behavior between the systems one. And you'll notice that it isn't a command function. You remember my story about the Bible and breaking it up? Uh, everybody can see that this is required. Now, I first realized this when I, I mentioned to you that I was production controller of the steelworks when I was very young. I was, I was 23. Now, hoary old steelworks managers, um, melting shop Yorkshiremen, and even worse, blast furnace <laughs> Lincolnshiremen, <laughs> they are not going to take a lot of lip from a 23-year-old with, a, with an, a pretense of being an academic, uh, intellectual person, you know. By no means. But they can see that unless someone sorts out this muddle, it's going to be, it's going to blow up, more or less literally. The oscillations start like that and then go like this, as we all know. So that's the job. And if you play it cleverly enough as a service, then nobody's going to get upset and nobody's going to feel that their personal autonomy is being infringed. So that's a big, a big secret. Now, let's take the school example, because this is a well-nigh perfect example. What in a school, a school, with a lot of classes, big, comprehensive, let's say, what is the system to? No, 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 the teacher's in the box trying to run the class. <laughs> no, no, got it. Got it in one or two. <laughs> yes, the timetable is the thing that stops everybody arriving in one place simultaneously and saying, please, sir, miss told us to come here, and you've got 500 people trying to get in the same room, and all the teachers going somewhere else. I mean, good heaven. So this is a perfect example of that, and I never met a teacher who said I'm victimized by the timetable, I'm not allowed to do my thing for that reason. There are other reasons why teachers aren't allowed to do their thing. They're mostly called Mr. Patton, I think. However, 
Uh, the timetable is obviously a service. And if you are a teacher and you have to go to the dentist in a hurry, you look at the timetable and you say to your friend, I see you've got a free period, would you mind invigilating my class? And it's a, a really valuable service. So we've seen that in the steelworks, we've seen it in the... Now, what are the other projects? Retail. Where do you... Well, now, we don't... We haven't yet established for sure which level of recursion you're at. Um, well, we started off when we originally looked at it at um, the level of an actual store. Yeah. So store management, local management, imagine uh, any DIY company. Yes. Well, DIY, company. DIY, I see. I wasn't... I was thinking that you, you set me off on groceries, you know with Tesco and so on. Yeah. Well, do you tell me what System 2 is then? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. You can't have all the, uh, you know, all this butter here and no marge sort of thing. Um, and, and if you look at the whole of Tesco's, you've got a very interesting example because you've got all these stores dot dotted around in a region, let's say. It's probably a regional warehouse. And somebody has got to stop all that oscillating. Don't want all the butter in Hollandshaw and all the margin ever is to it. So, what's the next example we're trying? I, I'll get used to this in a minute. Transport. Well, now, again, timetabling, obviously. Any more? Uh, who else is with Claire? I don't want to pick on you. Oh, yes. Uh, Cathy, you try. The signals, you know, are likely to be, whether we like it or not, a red line phenomenon because they're mandatory. I mean, if you, if you bust a signal, you're going to have a crash. That's no good. No, it's, it's things a little more subtle than that. And again, I suppose timetabling is really the, the big example. And as we break up the rail system for privatization, it's quite evident that getting from one one system to another, from one company to another, is going to be an absolute nightmare. Already, uh, Lena found, she, she visits North Wales quite a lot, uh, there's, a, there's a bit of privatised railway up there, and they wouldn't tell her what, what, the, what intersects with British Rail, didn't want to know. I mean, come on. <laughs> so, now, system two, we've been looking at the most outstanding examples, but you see, anything that controls oscillation, damps is the word, not controls, damps oscillation, will count. Now, let me give you quite an odd example, because it might have occurred to you. Um, if you've got a, a big company of any sort, and uh, the individual divisions or sub-companies, whatever they're going to be inside that, pursuing their public image, they design letterheads. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got one of those companies saying, we, our perception is that we have to be staid and respectable, and they do a sort of super harrowed job on the letterheads and so and, and another company says, we're after the youth and, and so forth, and has a, a big jazzy affair, and they both say, members of the something group on on the bottom uh, it isn't going to work so that's why you have a thing called a house style and you have to study the requirements of all the bits and come to some agreement now again with any luck that won't be imposed from above what, what I should say if I were the managing director of a group like that is to, at uh, the management meeting, I would say to all the bosses of the units, uh, the systems one, that is, uh, nominate somebody, each of you, please, to a committee to discuss this. And uh, we'll hire the best designer we can think of, and between them, they come up with something, and this is passed around, and I've done this often, actually. Works a treat. And nobody's going to accuse you of fascist behavior if, if you play that and that is a system too because it's stopping the oscillations that would set in if everybody tries to outdo everybody else and spends a fortune on designers and letterheads and god knows what the system 
I'm sorry, we forgot, I forgot that, yes. Yes, well, uh, yes, and, and the Whip's office, you see, is going to be, now that, that's an interesting case, isn't it, because a lot of parliamentarians regard the Whip's as, as, uh, as fascist bastards, <laughs> and they're not supposed to be, they're supposed to be there to smooth business. So that's a very nice example. But the rules of procedure, what, is, what do they call it in Westminster, the uh, Erskine May, is it? Uh, anyway, there's, there's a book that you look up and uh, you, the precedents and all this kind of stuff, which is administered by the Speaker. And again, you see, this, the Speaker is part of system, is the sort of head of system to in Parliament, isn't she? Because... Uh, you know, although she occasionally does a red line job and says w withdraw, throw him out, most of the time she's, she's trying to damp oscillation. Doing a very good job too, as far as I can see. We've been very lucky with our speakers. Do you think that, uh, who's that splendid Welsh chap before Betty Boothroyd? Tony Pandy, yes. Uh, they, uh, I don't know why we can't get ministers we deserve. We've got speakers we deserve. They say this has been too in charge. It's not right. <laughs> so now we've seen why we have to have a system too. Do you think you've got that firmly? Because it's a, a very interesting thing and much misrepresented by people who try to use this model. They find the notion of anti-oscillation pretty complex. It is, you know, but you, you grapple with it. So the result is that many people say it's the office function. Oh, good heavens, offices do all sorts of things. And I really, really annoys me to, to see this. <laughs> I was just thinking, this will teach our worthy producer to open the windows up here. We're going to get blasted. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say, Lee? <laughs> yes, you see, what I said to you yesterday was any line that appears on here is actually a loop, and you can't keep drawing loops all over the place because the system two is entering there and coming back out again. And uh, actually, there's quite a complex thing going on at these interchanges. You'll find that when you get the full diagram, it's, good heavens, it's much more complicated than I'm drawing it. For instance, there is a triangle here in each case, which in the case of, for instance, of production control of the steelworks, these are local production controllers who own some sort of allegiance to the, this one because, uh, because they're using a uniform kind of planning system, let's say, but also our allegiance across here. And you know one of the troubles with the old uh, the old family tree organisation chart it became a it became a, an item of faith that you couldn't have more than one boss. But this is clearly silly, you know, in human affairs. In human affairs, we have all sorts of allegiances, and it's not that simple. That's why I said the family tree chart was a means for blaming. You know, it's your fault, your fault, your fault, like that. Oh no, those are amplifiers. No, I beg your pardon. This is this. Uh, you see, I'm, there's a limited number of basic sim symbols that I use: the amoeba for environments, the circle for the process, the square for the management, and this triangle this way up for for anti-oscillatory behaviour. Now, the green line has the triangle the other way up, and looks like that. And that is System 3 star. Well, just a minute, we haven't got the System 3. <laughs> now, I want to go on applying this rule that in trying to find out what the laws of viability actually are, what I did was say, I will look at what is necessary and sufficient. Now, System 1 is obviously necessary because without it, you haven't got anything. And then asked the question, is that going to be sufficient? And we said, no, because oscillatory be behavior setting in, we must have a system too. Now can we stop there? Well we could, but please note, there isn't anybody on the board at the moment who knows what's happening everywhere. 
each of these uh, each of these people knows what he or she is up to and probably knows something about the others but not necessarily very much now system three oh dear me <laughs> let's try again system three exists precisely because it has the overall view and that is where you're going to find all the management techniques that are known as optimizing techniques things like operational research which uh, insofar as they're dealing with optimization you see could result have any of you met linear programming you will certainly have done you too yes well these these things take these techniques what are they doing in principle they're taking chunks of uh, activity here and putting them together and trying to get the optimal result for the whole now in the limit please note that could result in sending for this person and saying awfully sorry old chap or old girl or whatever it's going to be we don't need you uh, every if we make more profit without your thing although individually it's making a profit we can use the, invest the money better in a different mix now that is an extreme case but uh, it betokens the fact that if you do look at this level at the whole you can almost certainly improve the allocations especially in, in some businesses certainly in transport uh, certainly in retailing I'm, t I'm trying desperately to hang on to our examples I don't think anything can improve on <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling uh, schools of course uh, you can you can optimize you know you you're trying to get a group of classes together you see this very much in uh, further education um, Elena teaches a lot in the further education system and uh, she doesn't know from one year to the next whether she will have a class where she had it last year because it may get dissolved in the process of trying to optimize the budget then depends how many people come and where the subsidy is coming from and whether the class is paying it's all that mix is going to give you a system three problem so given that this is now we're running into senior management compared with local management then obviously we're going to make system two dependent from system three that's where it's going to get its authority from and so is system three star because it's system three which is going to uh, summon up these audits that we were talking about they're going to cause things to be examined either financially or man management or electric motors we were on about uh, and that now is the autonomic part of this system now why do I say autonomic? I, I, I've often mentioned that this all began by studying viability in the human body with the uh, models of human physiology and particularly the mathematical models of the central nervous system which includes the brain of course. Well, it's worth mentioning this I think because it fixes it in your mind quite well. This is the autonomic nervous system we're talking about where the the systems one are the major functions of the body things like the liver system and the kidney system and the respiration system and you'll notice that they're all they're autonomic now that's a nice word because the Greek here is self of course auto nomos is law and they they provide they are self-governing and yet obviously they can't run amok we can't have that <laughs> So it, it fixes it clearly in your mind that what this meaning, what is the meaning of this word autonomy that I, I'm very, very anxious gets full wearing among your, in your thinking. Uh, and to think of the autonomic nervous system as representing that is, is quite helpful, I think. You see, I can't... Hmm, how should I put this? 
Consider the debate that you have in management circles in all our examples. It's invariable that you have debates about centralization versus decentralization. And in our big institutions, it's come down to this, that you hire consultants and they say, you are over-centralized, decentralized. And then the next time round, you hire another lot of consultants and say, you're very decentralized, this isn't the current wisdom, get more central. You have a joint buying policy, you'll save a lot of money. And this, <laughs> this thing just goes back and forth like a pendulum. And I've really seen a lot of that in 40 years of this game. So, um, Yes, uh, what light does the central nervous system throw on that business of, of centralization and decentralization? Well, it's awfully obvious, isn't it? I'm talking to you, you're listening, bless you. We can't afford to take time off to remember to make our hearts pump or to breathe. If, if we did, we wouldn't be able to pay any attention. We'd say, oh my God, I've forgotten that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. So that is an autonomic function, and it goes on, and it got requisite variety built into it, you see? On the other hand, if I say, there's my bus, I must catch it, I can go <laughs> like that, suck in a whole lot of oxygen, totally interfering with the autonomy of the respiration system, you notice. And off I go and catch the bus. Adrenaline starts, all the, all the necessary things happen with that intervention. Now, in our management model, you can intervene in that. If you're the top management and have got a good reason and, and think you can handle it, you, you can intervene. And, of course, most of our industrial troubles and management troubles arise because of people intervening in things they should damn well leave alone. <laughs> or things where they don't understand the effects of their intervention, which is very much the common one. Wouldn't you agree? The body, however, the body functions are programmed, uh, are changeable. They're not, you, you don't set, start off with your life with a one set of autonomous functions. That's right. And then they, they change throughout your life. That's what habits are. Mm -hmm. Things that you become, go from conscious thoughts to subconscious right. thoughts and become habits. Um, uh, I suppose vice versa, it can happen as well, you can lose habits. Mm. It's not so easy, yeah. So it could be the same in, in Dim Smiggy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well it is, isn't it? I mean, you, you start saying, this is how we do it around here. And before you know, that, that's a useful habit at the start, and it ends up being a total resistance to any kind of change, and you go down the tube. So you're quite right about that. I thought you were going to say that the body renews itself on a kind of seven-year cycle, you know, you renew all your cells. And I think that that is really quite fascinating. Why am I still recognizable to someone I haven't seen for ten years, <laughs> given that I am totally reconstructed? <laughs> so this really pinpoints the fact that systems are fundamentally uh, a reflection of the relationships between the elements that is what matters more than the elements themselves. That is why we were saying before, a hospital can be a hospital for sick children for hundreds of years. Because all the, all the elements are changing, but the relationships are firmly in place. Good. Well now, that's the argument for autonomy. Don't interfere. <laughs> unless you know what you're doing and have good reasons and all the rest of it. So, in the, the Parliament, I think, you mentioned the British Parliament, as opposed to the wonderful world of Parliament that we have got. Um, three would be the government. No, I've Trouble is, you see, we've got, a, we've got a very difficult job of defining exactly what you're trying to mean by Parliament. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's under some definitions, three could be the bloke who runs the building. <laughs> See, yeah. Leader of the house, maybe. Yes, that's a pretty good one. But again, we get back to whips, you see, fulfilling all these functions when they're only supposed to be system two. 
but they manoeuvre and could you know, uh, finagle till the cars come home to uh, manipulate the business of the house, which is a three function and not a two function. Isn't that a, a parliament, another constitutional parliament, with three you had a state? No, we haven't got the MOO yet. No. You see, a head of state is, is hugely emblematic for one thing, and this is getting on with running things. Now, I often refer to this system 3 to one I often call it that, which is what we've got on the board. And what I describe it as in all my writings is, is inside and now. Meaning, this is what's going on inside our organization, and it's in real time with a vengeance. And therefore, all the lines you see, all these homeostatic loops, ought to be in real time, and they never are. You've got awful lags and differential lags. Some, some things take longer than others to get through the system and so on. Oh, boy. And all of this is so clear from a cybernetic point of view. If you go in to clean a place up, you can instantly see, once you've made this mapping onto the model, what you have to do. And that's really what I've spent my life doing, going around and, uh, well, insofar as I've been using the VSM, I do do other things. <laughs> I get very tired of getting an albatross called the VSM around my neck. But, um, but yes, in, insofar as we are doing that, that is the trick. And I will move into a client's place, lie on the hotel floor in the bedroom, uh, in the small hours of the morning, making maps. Uh, onto this model and then go in and say well I can't understand how this works and everybody goes white and they think who's the who's the leak who's the spy that's <laughs> <laughs> it really does happen all the time it gets a source of constant amusement to me <laughs> they've been trying to conceal this but you can instantly see that system 2 hasn't got requisite variety for example you see that's your criterion and now we're well away from the problem of actually counting all these states because we know what it means and we can see that if you have a production control department of three men to save money with no computers but a planning board to save money and then you're trying to run the whole steel works, it's not going to work. You see, requisite variety, oh, come off it. And yet that's what they, they do. People were always saying to me at this... Uh, practical level of business which I haven't dealt with much in recent years because I've been working so much for government um, they're always saying to me we want a cheap and effective system and this, this is practically an oxymoron you see because the, the more complex the business the more complex the it's, it's just there I'm sorry you know be very nice to now, there are simplifying things, of course, which come under the heading of amplification. One of my favorite thoughts about that is traffic. If everybody got onto the roads in motor cars and drove all over the place, uh, you know, there'd be instant chaos. And we have this thing called the rule of the road. And we drive on the left. If you're French, you drive on the right. But so long as everybody agrees which, there's all these jokes about the Channel Tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in the middle <laughs> anyway uh, this this rule of the road is a huge amplifier isn't it because for one simple statement keep left you get a huge amount of regulatory power you just think of what I suppose nobody had stumbled on that Haven't you discovered yet, Kate, that most things are both, depending on how you're looking at them? It's regulatory power on behalf of the, the people who are policing the roads and trying to make the system work. It's an attenuator of people who would like to drive willy-nilly. Quite right. But they, they very often, these, these loops are um, <coughs> something, especially if it's a powerful thing you do, I mean a systemically powerful thing, it's likely to to have its amplifier um, uh, element and its attenuating element both working on that same loop. Now one of the, one of the uh, 
diagrams I'm going to give you is um, a, a, a device for analyzing a homeostatic loop and um, I'll show you it when when we get there but I thought I'd just mention it because it shows two blocks and it shows all the transducers and all the channels and the criterion of stability in the middle and you are invited to fill that in you see if you're using this technique well now the interesting thing is if you start trying to count the number of homeostats in this di this kind of diagram you, you run into thousands almost instantly you really do it's quite alarming so clearly you're not going to be able to do that uh, for the whole shebang and a lot of it would be repetitive anyway because you're in a certain type of business let's say and in certain patterns will keep reproducing themselves but what it does enable you to do is if you if you're puzzled by something if you don't like the look of something if something keeps malfunctioning move in there with this chart and analyze the hell out of it you see and say i know what's the matter here these transducers aren't working or this channel has got to be opened up so we're now beginning to get a grip on this thing, aren't we? And the last thing I want to say about this part of the diagram and about autonomy, which really applies to the whole diagram, but you can begin to see this emerge at this level of the inside and now, is the law of cohesion of a viable system. And that simply says that you restrict variety to the extent required to maintain the identity of the system and no more now if you can adhere to that rule you see that it gives you it gives you the uh, the okay to take away from people's autonomy but only if that action is justified by coherent identity of the whole and so many things where we intervene with people of authority don't have that sanction. Uh, when you analyze them, the, 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 there's just interference, for God's sake. <laughs> so, that's what we, that's what we want to, to bear in mind. Now, automatically that means that you have to drive decision down. You have to drive decision down the system to the, the smallest, most junior trivial level where it can satisfactorily be taken and what is the criterion for that have they got the information if they can't if you've got someone who's very junior and hasn't got the information to take the decision then a decision has to rise in the organization but you see in real life uh, decisions rise in the organization for all sorts of bogus reasons such as I'm not touching this with a <laughs> let somebody else put his head on the chop <laughs> but that's not good cybernetics it, it works the other way as well it does they don't let people put their head on the yeah, chop yeah it does perhaps they should be uh, absolutely so. absolutely <laughs> well I'd like you to remember that point Glenn uh, in a little while we shall we shall come to something where that is I've caused an awful lot of trouble by my views on that very point. So, so much for the inside and now. Now, what does that suggest? We are dealing necessary and sufficient conditions for viability. We've got the inside and now sorted out. Can we leave it at that? If it's important this identity, we need a boundary for the yes that's true but we we began by considering that Kate because you know we said we've got to know what we're talking about so you've got a boundary well the boundary of this paper would do very hard to define but you've got to try and define it and you say that's where we're working now what uh, may I repeat my question we're dealing with the inside and now what does that leave over <laughs> absolutely that's right I call it outside and then <laughs> yes. so that's system four now I feel a real need to justify these breakdowns you see I you heard me carrying on no end about reductionism and so on and the need for holistic thinking 
And yet, as soon as you start work, here I go carving things up again. Now, the way things have got carved up in the past owe a great deal to history. Uh, companies grew by takeovers and mergers and amalgamations and adding bits on and new bits of technology. And they're not coherent at all. They're probably coherent in somebody's mind who has decided to do that. But it really defies sensible analysis. By which I mean, if you look at any institution that's been around for some time and say to yourself, take the health service. Um, say to yourself, we are spending more money on this than anything. Uh, it's the biggest business in the country. How would you design it? given that we've got all this money. I think it's inconceivable that it would be anything like what we've got <laughs> because it is frozen out of history. And you try and tell a hospital that it, it, it doesn't exist any longer. It's, it's going to be done some other way. They'll, they'll have a purple fit. So, uh, Partly it's, it's historical, these, these divisions. Partly it's, it's the functional divisions come out of professionalism. So you say, well, I'm the production man, and you can go, and you salesman can take a running jump. I'm the man who creates this, this stuff. And the salesman says, it's all, well, anybody could do that. If you can't sell it, it'll all stay, stay in the warehouse. And so you get this functional division. Somebody else says, well, it's got to be financed, and none of you ginks know anything about money. I'm, I'm a financial wizard. And so accountancy grows and grows, and all these things become professions and have their own institutions, none of which helps, because they end up by fighting each other in a very real sense, I think. Now, all right, this is my attack on... on... Uh, reductionism and now what am I doing here well you see the thing is that you've got to have some division or you're just talking about great blobs you can't you know there's no uh, there's no insight into anything to so you've got to do something now my defense of the three and four division is that it's very biological if you look at biological systems like the body, as I said, 3, 2, 1 is the autonomic nervous system and is easily understandable as such. 4 is easily understandable as the whole sensory system and the, the midbrain and limbic uh, system, so-called, that sits on top of the old part of the brain. Now, the, this stuff ends about here. It's the, the spinal cord uh, ending in the medulla pons, the bulb at the top, and the cerebellum, which is the thing that keeps you upright and stops you falling over and so on with good luck. Um, and that is, is the old part of the brain. Then we develop this new thing, which gives us foresight, which most animals don't have, you see. So, so that's a natural division. If you look at whole species, you find that the reproductive system is, is in there to, to keep the species going beyond the individuals. And that's a, that it really is a rather separate system from the one that keeps the individual alive. So I argue that if you've got to make a, a, a break, this is a pretty clever and sensible and understandable way of doing it. And so I come along with system four now, please realize that this is not a hierarchy. Uh, because it's drawn like it's drawn, people think it's a hierarchy. It never intended to be a hierarchy. So system four has a homeostatic loop which is doing this to the outside and the future. That's why the question mark. Now, please note, these are outside too. But these outsides are defined in terms of what each of these people is doing. So the totality of the company, of the company's environment, is this. It includes these outsides and it includes a bigger outside that they, they, they're too localized to recognize. 
but which the company as a whole must recognize and an unknown future. Now don't forget this is recursive. These people also have an unknown future which is in there. <laughs> the whole model is reproducible, don't forget, at the next level of recursion. So these people quite happily looking at their environment saying we don't know everything about this and we don't know what the future holds and so on. But what I'm emphatic about is the awful mistake that people constantly make of thinking that the addition of the systems four of the constituent systems one, are you with me? Is that sum is the company's environment. And clearly it isn't. I mean even the simple Venn diagram here about the, the, the amount of space we're using up. There's whole, whole acres of stuff here which only the the totality is going to be addressing. I mean, to, to, to try and make this uh, more real, if, um, let's suppose that we are dealing with an insurance company and uh, these, vertic these horizontal lines are, are uh, manufacturer's life in Canada, manufacturer's life in the United States, manufacturer's life in England, manufacturer's life in Hong Kong, all of which actually exist, by the way. Now, those, those local managers couldn't care less about the rest of the world or whether to set one up in Borneo. It's nothing to do with them. If, if you're running the Canadian enterprise, you could think whether you should have an extra office in Saskatchewan. Uh, but you wouldn't be thinking, well, perhaps we ought to have an office in Florida except that you wouldn't get away with a good. <coughs> so, <laughs> do see that the higher level recursion is not the sum of the lower levels. That is very, very important. Now, very, very often, when you get to something like research and development, you find that the total company has got in place R&D activity in all its units, and they think that that's it and never is. And that's where they get caught out, of course, because huge new innovations come out of the total industrial setting and not out of some particular thing which is already more or less uh, redundant and archaic. But little, little do they know it, but it's, it's like from a wider point of view, you can see it's had it. I mean, no, nobody's buying uh, 33 and a third vinyls any longer. <laughs> there were people around saying, we will always do this. Just as Hugh Cudlip always used to say to me, people will always read the Daily Mirror, and I said, I doubt it. <laughs> we sold five and a quarter million copies a day when I was there. It's half that now, less than half. Hmm. So, what are you going to find in System 4? Marketing. marketing, well, some of the marketing is going to be in 3, isn't it? Let's, let's be a bit more precise about the terms. Market research you're going to find in 4. Mm -hmm. Advertising certainly on that loop. R&D I've already mentioned, but we better make it very precise. That's probably the major thing. Come on, there's a lot of more you could shove in here if you uh, let your mind roam. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and of course customer relations come in at this, this next level down system for They've got to look to their customers but there's going to be an overall customer relations problem, policy with a bit of luck, which is going to come out of System 4. Ah, well that's very interesting because I reckon that a, a, a thing like that has to come out of the ethos right at the top of the organization, but you know very well where safety is going to be dealt with in this model, don't you? Catherine? Uh, <laughs> well, that 
could be dealt with several places. Yes, it could. Well, analyze, okay. analyze it. You've got to have laws about things. Mm -hmm. So that's your red line. That's red line, yes. Okay. You're going to have um, safety checks. So that's coming down the green line. Right. Anybody else want to jump in here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're missing the most obvious <laughs> thing. <laughs> it, uh, you, well, uh, yes, but yeah, you slipped a level of recursion. We were looking at this level. Yeah, for sure. Quite so. We're, what are you? We're talking about safety here, Lee. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's just wrap that up. We we'll come back to this. No, the, the most. The, the, the most no, but it's system two, for goodness sake. You're trying to stop oscillating behavior. It's no use sending somebody out of this line into the next line without a hard hat if he's going to have rocks dropped on his head. You know, there, there has to be a uniform understanding through the company of what is safe practice in our kind of industry, doesn't there? And that's where it will get fed in. So you stumbled on a very interesting thing, which is evident with all these major functions like safety certainly it is in accounting that when you start looking at some issue of financial management let's call it you you find it in all these five systems and that's very powerful method of analysis because you you, you you're no longer dealing with their technical jargon and their cl close-knit little um, group of experts you you can see where the some of it's going down here, some of it's going down here, and that's why I got in a tangle yesterday, much to my embarrassment, when I said there are six lines and we could only find five, because system two was the sixth. So the whole idea is that the vertical, uh, that's this way, uh, sorry, vertical, and the horizontal varieties ultimately match. That's that's the key. Now, we were talking about System 4, let's get back to Lee's point. The shareholders, indeed. Uh, well, they're a very mysterious lot, aren't they? Because most of them don't even know what the business is about. And the, the theory of, of, uh, the theory of uh, enterprise is very, very short on this. Um, I, I got into a terrible uh, skirmish with uh, Mr. Macmillan, who was Harold's son, what was his name, who was a minister, and he wanted, uh, he was a Tory, uh, with this uh, big banner saying, a property-owning democracy, and he said, uh, everybody should have shares in everything that they can afford, and then we spread authority, and we spread responsibility, and so on. Oh, come on. I've got a hundred shares in in General Motors, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I have to be taken seriously. I should go, go. <laughs> now, nonetheless, of course, the point is a correct one, and legally, this is the state of affairs. So you get people buying the hundred shares in order to go and stir up hell at the annual general meeting, as you well know. But not nearly enough is that done. <laughs> So, I mean, I've, I've worked in, in these huge organizations uh, all my life, mainly as a consultant, but also, as you know, uh, as a manager, and you never hear the shareholders mentioned, ever, except when the annual general meeting is coming up. I was present, I was talking to the chairman over a drink in his office when the financial director came in, and I'm on the management at this stage, not a consultant, and um, the chairman said to the financial director, how's it coming? I'm thinking of the AGM, because this is the one time when the chairman has to be up front and actually make himself visible enough to get shot. And uh, well, the financial director, being typical financial director, very nice, quiet man, said, well, it's all, it's all right. And um, the chairman said, well, you know, what, what, what's the overall picture look like? Are we, are we, are we in profit? Are you in much profit? Is, is, are we hitting dicey period? Don't even know this, you notice, because you're running this huge, great machine. The financial director said to her, that, so the chairman said, what's the balance sheet going to say next Thursday? Or next month? And the financial director said, what do you want it to say, chairman? Just that cool. 
terrible. <laughs> I was I was really shocked at the time, but I I've, I've been around longer now, and I know that this is the uh, these things are doctored in all sorts of ways, and it's only when when some cataclysmic event happens that somebody gets caught. I mean, what happened to poor old Bob Maxwell, who I knew awfully well, uh, would happen to practically all the big shots if they died at the wrong moment without time to... You know, people borrow money from funds all over the place and pay them back and manoeuvre the thing. And the, the idea that this guy is actually sort of burying gold bricks in the cellar, you know, and stealing the money is, is, is the popular press kind of version. What the guys are doing is, is having an enormous amount of fun manipulating all sorts of things. So I, I get very tired of this. I mean, there's a whole lot of seminars on business ethics these days, which don't, don't, they're not founded in reality at all to me. So, it's your point, Lee. I've held forth about this. What are you going to say about it? <laughs> well, they, sh they should do, is the, is the short answer, but they're marginalised. Absolutely, absolutely. I did say that most of them don't know what the company does, and that applies even to the extent of external directors, you know. I said to one very famous lord, who, whose name was bought, you see, to put on the letterhead, I said, according to who's who, Tony, you are a director of 47 companies. Do you really think you could tell me what they all do? And he said, don't ask silly questions, have another drink. How could he? No, not requisite variety, you see. You just take your little fee, look down the balance sheet, say, well, that seems to be healthy enough. Um, we keep talking about um, organisations and the level of force seems to be very high level, talking about shareholders and um, advertising, um, market research, whatever. If you, if you were somewhere lower down in your manufacturing company, um, so you're, you're in a different level of recursion, mm -hmm. So what you've got is on your system one is um, a group of machines working all the time. Okay. What would the system four be now? Well, it's the one that the one is this one. See, the way I draw this, let me try and put this in. I'll put it in. I've run out of colours. I'll put this in in red so that you can see it. Uh, Inside this box, which we now know as System 1, at the next level of recursion is 5, 4, 3, 2, 3 star, mm -hmm. it's all there. So you've got the whole thing reduplicated. Now, at this lowly level, System 4, I mean, depends how lowly we are. I mean, if you're talking about a, a weaving shed in, in Lancashire, the, the System 4 is is the the boss in the shed who has a bath once a month and, and has a good idea <laughs> see if that's the best you can do. <laughs> but if it's a division of ICI, there's all this research going on, and the members of the division uh, ought to be able to find out what it is. That's why you have the company newsletter and so on going across here. Whether they can find out what this one is is another matter altogether. And a lot of it's secret, you see, because you're planning into the future. I, I want to stop this session here because of the time factor. But I just want to remind you, do, do, do you know what the buggy whip syndrome is? Never heard of it? Well, I, I'm very fond of this. Everybody used to know what this was it's about 30 years ago, and it just dropped out of the currency. Uh, here is a manufacturer of buggy whips. A buggy is a little horse-drawn cart. And this it's great long whip, you know. <laughs> so, so he proves his machinery, he proves his leather, does all the right things, uh, cuts his cost, can't understand why he's making a loss. 
see? It doesn't happen to have noticed that buggies are going out. <laughs> Motor cars are taking over. <laughs> now, this is a very serious problem, and nobody mentioned corporate planning as a name when we were talking about what's in System 4, but probably that's the most important thing. Well, indeed, you know, you pay the words extra and make them mean what you like. It's, uh, yes. I, I, I think, in my nomenclature, I have strategy at level three, and I call four developmental and five normative. So, we haven't got five yet. Let's put it in for the sake of completeness. You see, we've got these two things being the inside and now, and the outside and then. Now, we've got this massive problem haven't we? And I usually put these huge arrows in, like this. What is this that I'm drawing, folks? What is this? A uh, homeostat, you see? Now, the problem is, you have got to balance your investment and I don't just mean money, I mean time, care, attention, talent. In between, keeping the show on the road and looking out in a rapidly changing world. And this is no easy task. So, this is why you need a System 5 in the end. Because System 5 is much more concerned with monitoring that homeostat than with issuing orders down here. Let's leave it at that and then we'll blow this up and have a good look at it after, after the break. Thank you.